Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I was talking to my father on the phone this morning, and he had a question which I think that you all might have as well. He was asking me what exactly is supposed to go on with BACK today. Now, before I tell you what's supposed to go on with BACK today, I wanted to make sure you understood that this, and it's BAKKT.com if you want to go look at their website. This company is owned by the the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange, which is ICE, I-C-E, Intercontinental Exchange. And, and this, this company right here is what is the embodiment. It represents the coming of Wall Street into all of this. And that's why it's so significant. Today, you're not going to see digital assets go crazy. Just if they go crazy, it's not necessarily because of this. You're not going to see things go crazy just because of what they're going to start doing today. Um, but it is the representation of Wall Street coming in. And for that reason, it is huge. It's massive. OK. All right. Well, here's what's going to happen on today. And this is directly from BACT's website. But again, you can go and check out their, their website. Um, it's back, B-A-K-K-T dot com. But this is from their frequently asked questions on their website. When will testing functionality start? User acceptance testing is scheduled to begin on July 22nd, 2019, which is today. IFUS and ICUS will have working group calls to help prepare for the new contracts and UAT. Clearing and delivery capabilities will be available in UAT. Access to backed warehouse will be available to all participating members to facilitate deliveries that result from trading activity in the UAT environment. All member accounts will be loaded with test tokens to process test deliveries. And then it says, when will the futures contracts actually launch in production? A launch date is expected in the second half of 2019. The launch will follow UAT and BACS receipt of regulatory approval from uh, NYDFS as noted above. And so the testing does begin today and that's progress, folks. Um, we're, we're heading down the line. Um, you're in a good place if you're a digital asset holder right now. Uh, I, I actually bought more XRP this morning. I am enjoying, I'm enjoying accumulating my XRP because it's like, to me, it's like walking up to an apple tree and just getting to pick as many apples as I want at the price I want, <laughs> which is cheap, cheap, cheap. So keep the prices low. Take them lower for all I care for now. Um, what's coming is going to be a monster. Um, I wanted to show you all this for those of you that don't use it. I've just now, um, I was looking at CoinGecko. Um, this is a, another option for those of you that don't like coin market cap for a variety of reasons. This is one of the sites that looks most similar to coin market cap. And I checked it against coin market cap and it's also got um, a similar market cap. There's some on some, some of these um, platforms or some of these uh, websites, there's a pretty large discrepancy between different sites. I see coin gecko, which is it's coin gecko.com by the way. It's very similar in the layout and also very similar in the market cap. The numbers look similar in terms of it looks like they're pulling their data from the from similar sources. And that's important. But, so go check CoinGecko out if you haven't already. OK, um, I love these names that are takeoffs on Brad Garlinghouse's name. This is Bread Garlic Breath <laughs> at um, J-O-E blog I-N-G-L-O-L-Z. Bread Garlic Breath <laughs> sent me this. Um, this is uh, from Cryptopolis at Cryptopolis underscore X. Breaking. This is getting real. Now, this is more exciting, folks. First, I saw this, saw this on my Think or Swim TD Ameritrade paper money demo uh, account industry test. Then I saw this, which was never there before today, in my live real money trading account. 
And I think that what we're looking at here is a TD Ameritrade account. Now, we've already talked about how TD Ameritrade, to, my understanding is that TD Ameritrade is going to be the first um, the first traditional financial company to open up digital asset trading on to their retail investors. And that is huge, folks. Um, and, and the reason I know that is because I, there, there was an article written about it. They acknowledged it. TD Ameritrade, remember, as well as NASDAQ, is invested in ErisX, which is a new digital asset platform. TD Ameritrade said that they were going to, to allow their retail customers, there's like 11 million of them, to buy and sell digital assets through, on the, you know, ultimately it's going through ErisX, I'm assuming. But um, now you're beginning to see, he said that it's showing as an industry test, but you're beginning to see it show up in their accounts. And that is a big deal, folks. Um, I, I, as I've told the story many times, on, well, I just said many. Someone um, did a parody video of me the other day where they said I say many a lot, <laughs> which, which it was funny. Um, so many, many times I had told you that, um, that when, I, when I first got into digi digital assets, I told my wife that if I was right about this, one day we would be able to transfer our XRP into a Charles Schwab account or an E-Trade account. And when that time came, it, we would know that it was we were a thousand percent right about this, and that's exactly what you're seeing. That's beginning. That's going to start happening in 2019, and that is huge. Okay, um, next. Now this, I, I'm just I'm still scratching my head on what in the world this guy must be thinking. The only way that he would have come out and been as arrogant as he is in this thing about this is if he plans on trying to compete with XRP. It's the only way. It's the only thing that makes any sense. And Tiffany Hayden tweeted something out that lets me, makes me think that that's exactly what the guy's trying to do. What this was, is it's, a, it's from Ripple Press, at Ripple Press, uh, tweeted this out yesterday. Wirex co-founder and CEO, Pavel Matviv, XRP is a good example here, which is purely a security token. He says they try to act like a payment token, but it's a security token. It was a keynote speech at the Barcelona Trading Conference 2019. Um, they don't have a date there. But anyway, he, he very clearly, and, and he looks, he's got a, this smug look on his face when he says it. So I tweeted this out last night, how to lose business for dummies. I mean, this guy has all kinds of XRP investors who have gone and, and become a, a part or, or, or downloaded his app and, and really have, have helped the guy now. He's giving them a slap to the face. So then I saw this from uh, Tiffany Hayden. She had uh, retweeted this um, right here from XRP Research Center, and she says, busted. It's a tweet. Um, uh, it says, YRX app CEO is misleading 2.5 million customers into believing XRP is a security without quoting any official criteria. Um, it says he has, uh, he has a hidden agenda. This is the part that I didn't know. He has a hidden agenda against XRP for many years. He's just making it public now. Uh, he has also refused to talk on his conflicts of interest with the SBI group. And he's tweeting this out, which is from someone named Samuel Connor. Um, it says, uh, keynote, um, CEO, this is that, key, that thing I just showed you, building a powerful network that will change the let landscape of payments. Two and a half million registered users, 3,000 corporate customers regulated coming in Japan. In other words, it looks like, from the way I'm reading this, looks like he is trying to, he sees himself as a competitor to XRP, and that's why he's coming out talking like this. Well, I think this guy's in for a rude awakening. Um, oh, well. Okay, next, I thought this was great. Um, from Sergeant Obi Wan, blockchain lunar registry promising to tokenize the moon. Own a piece of the moon, everything will be tokenized. And this, these people actually put out a white paper down here. It says, um, uh, according to their white paper, al although the UN Outer Space Treaty ratified in 1967 prohibits the ownership of the moon or celestial bodies by a nation, it says nothing about private ownership. This does not preclude the in interpretation that private entities such as a civil as civil enterprises could exercise property rights over extraterrestrial resources. That's pretty wild. But anyway, that's as far as I'm going into that. I just thought it was funny. 
Um, but unless you have some kind of, unless they really can prove any kind of real ownership, I don't think their token sales are going to go very well, but who knows? There's been crazier things, right? 12 bullets left at 12 bullets left sent me this. Now this is interesting right here. Um, and you should all go and check this um, out. The, the website is down right now, but you, you, should, you need to go look at it. This came out yesterday. John Salmon, at Salmon JAS. The U.S., SEC, and FINRA have issued a statement on application of federal securities laws and the rules of FINRA to the potential intermediation of digital asset securities and transactions. But if you click on this, as of this morning even, this website is down for maintenance. Um, and I'm not sure, yeah, the site is undergoing scheduled maintenance. And so if you go down in here, it says site under maintenance and someone um, said, let's see, someone said something about how this might be a law firm or something, I'm not sure. But anyway, right now we have no idea what this tweet was about or what he's talking about, but it's just a link to a website uh, where there was a, a blog entry or something. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that the digital asset investor bought more XRP this morning and I was glad to do it. Thank you for listening.